I'm going to start by asking a question. What does the word neural mean to you? No. Brain? Yeah, exactly. And what does the word network mean to you? <laughs> no idea. Computer. Computer, exactly. This relationship between computer science and biology is what will be explored today. The phrase neural networks has two meanings. The aspiring computer scientists and engineers within the room may be thinking of machine learning, whereas the aspiring doctors may be thinking of the human brain. Recent developments in computer science, from chess playing algorithms to fully automated cars to personalized shopping algorithms, artificial intelligence has become a common buzzword. Well, a common misconception is that a computer is much more intelligent than a human, simply because it can compute 100 digit multiplications within the matter of a few seconds. However, there is much more to the story. An eagle, a fighter jet, while both perform the same task, flight, the ways in which they do this are remarkably different. An eagle is a biological system that has evolved over hundreds of millions of years to perform a plethora of generalized tasks, whereas a fighter jet is a highly specialized machine that can perfectly execute its sole task of flying at great speeds. And similarly, this analogy draws many parallels between the human brain and artificial intelligence. Our human brain is a natural system that can perform countless generalized tasks, whereas machine learning models are exceptional when performing specific tasks. A truly artificially intelligent system is one that can discover patterns by itself through its ability of crunching copious amounts of data, mirroring human behavior. And Rosenblatt was actually a social psychologist in the, in the 1950s. He was interested in a term called connectionism. Connectionism is a term where the human neurons and the computational neurons are linked in some way. Rosenblatt was a psychologist uh, from Cornell University and had completed his PhD studying the human cognition in neurobiology. He was specifically interested in modeling the complex activities of the brain rather than the mind, and unlike other psychologists, that was his main focus. So what he was initially intrigued was by, in the brain there are neurons, well, individually, each of the neurons that make up the brain have no intelligence. However, together, when they assemble together, these neurons create a powerful and intricate organ, one that can creatively think, one that can feel emotions, and one that controls every heartbeat, every blink, and every breath that we take. Inside our brain, there are over 80 billion neurons, in which every neuron is connected to another thousand neurons. I'm sure you can imagine the complex meandering of these neurons within the human brain. But this maze-like network is responsible for transmitting information throughout the human body in the form of chemical and electrical signals. And these signals are the basic ingredient of every single artificial intelligent model out there. What many people do not know is that this psychologist, Rosenblatt, is also known as the father of deep learning, since he was the one who invented the first artificial neural network, the perceptron. The perceptron was a single, basic, artificial, uh, artificial neural network, um, and its sole purpose was to take, uh, a class to take any input and classify it into one of two things, dog or cat, cancer or no cancer, and so on. There was tremendous power in, in this revolutionary technique, because he had created the first algorithm that could learn by itself, mirroring human behavior. Rosenblatt, a student from Cornell University, had changed from an up-and-coming, rising psychologist to one of the most influential computer scientists of all time. To me, this emphasizes how innovation in one completely separate field can truly impact another field. For example, the Great Ormond Street Hospital successfully transferred a pit stop technique from the Ferrari Formula One team into their hospital quite risky and unpredictable hospital procedure when transferring patients between the operating room and the intensive care unit. There is tremendous power in bringing together ideas from analogous industries, since over the course of hundreds of years, this is a source of radical innovation. And if we think about it, the human brain has evolved for millions and millions of years to become as powerful as it is today. Yet within the matter of less than 100 years, a computer has been able to achieve so much. Imagine what it can achieve in another 100 years. In 1959, Rosenblatt became the director of Cornell's Cognitive Systems Research, and here he was optimistic that groundbreaking innovation 
they just ahead. I'm enthusiastic about the versatile, real-life applications of computer science and technology that make a difference to our society. Powerful, data-driven algorithms provide life-changing support systems to doctors and to patients by enhancing every single aspect of this industry. From drug discovery, to forecasting breast cancer, to robot-assisted surgeries, technology is the spark that is changing the future of healthcare. Within a medical environment, the use of these robots is really, really useful. With incredibly high precision, they do not have shaky or tired hands, and they can perform minimally invasive soft tissue surgeries without making large incisions. This means that they reduce the recovery time and the potential for infections. Can you imagine a heart doctor performing surgery a thousand miles away from the actual patient? Well, every day, this technology is changing lives by allowing doctors to treat and examine patients in rural and remote locations away from where they are. One day we can imagine that there will be a robot-only surgical team in hospitals, but let's hope they don't go on strike. Yet all of this is centered around one thing, artificial intelligence, the single one innovation that is changing lives. For example, brain tumors, they are the deadliest forms of cancer. The statistics are stark. The average survival rate for anyone diagnosed with a brain tumor is only 35%. So now you can imagine that diagnosing these brain tumors as early as possible is most critical. To delve into how computers can learn faster and more accurately than any human radiologist, I wrote an extended project on the applications of machine learning and image segmentation algorithms in healthcare. Specifically, this Python program that demarcates the edema brain tumor on MRI scans. Although I won't go into the details of how it works, ultimately these types of algorithms provide fast, accurate and affordable insights that the human brain often does not notice. To me, it's interesting how since the start of this talk, we have completed a brain-to-brain -brain loop. We started by discovering neural networks using the human brain. And now, these same neural networks are protecting the human brain. This is the power of innovation. Thank you very much for listening.